lot of people out today, some planned, some unplanned, but um, Jason went this week to um, Washington and Oregon. This is like all kinds of jacked up, y'all. But um, anyway, and he got home late last night and just needed a day of rest and recoup, so he's out, but he had already asked me to prepare, so I've been preparing. And I really was going in a total different direction, but all week long, and actually it started last week, the week before the last, um, God has been really dealing with my heart about um, gratitude and thankfulness and all kinds of stuff. And it's all going to hopefully come together for you guys. So, um, first of all, did anyone have a nudge this week? No? No nudges? Okay. Did anyone have anything this week that they're just exuberantly grateful and thankful for? Wow. Okay. Well, I did. You did, Paul? Okay. It, it, it would take me an hour. God's just good. I, I'm, that's right. God is good. And, you know, I've had some battles, uh, you know, with my health, but... God's always there. Amen. He's always there. You just need to call upon his name and believe. Right. Trust and believe. You know, <clears throat> even though it, it may not happen just now, you know, don't give up. Keep praying. Keep believing because right. God, he wants us to really depend upon him and to look to him in our hour of need. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. So I'm going to pray for us before we get started, <clears throat> and um, just that God would help our hearts be ready to hear the thing that he wants to get across to us today. So Father, I just thank you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your love, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your kindness, that you're so, so kind to us, Lord. I thank you for this sun and the beautiful weather that you have given us this day and this weekend, that it was so pretty. Lord, I just ask that you would help us to really be able to see your beauty and see the essence of who you are everywhere we turn. And Lord, I just ask that you would open our hearts and our minds and our ears today to the thing that you want us to learn, that you want to do in our hearts and in our lives, Lord. I ask that you would just help us to be prepared to not just hear this word, Lord, but to act on it, to do it, and to come back with testimony to help everyone else want to do the same. Lord, we just thank you for who you are again, and uh, we ask all these things in your name. Amen. <clears throat> so, I have titled this message, because I know that people like titles. Um, I didn't know what to title it, but I found this cute little thing that says, Think Happy, Be Happy. That's exactly what we're going to talk about, is your thoughts, and the way you think, and... Um, what you put into your life so that that's what pours out, right? That's right. So, <clears throat> Proverbs 17, 12 says, I mean, 17, 22 says, A joyful, cheerful heart brings healing to both body and soul, but the one whose heart is crushed struggles with sickness and depression. You can go to the next slide, John. Um, I thought I had a clicker, but I can't find it anywhere, so I'm sorry. I <laughs> think <laughs> um, so funny story, two weeks ago, I guess, <clears throat> I was thinking about Lent, <laughs> and I actually made like a joke that said, I'm not Catholic, I told Aaron this, I was like, you know, I know I'm not Catholic, but for Lent, I'm giving up Coke, and it hasn't happened, but you know, um, anyway, it needed to happen, but it hasn't yet. But anyway, so I was already, for whatever reason, this year, I've never really thought about Lent before because, I mean, that's just not something that I do. So, but this year, Lent has really, like, for whatever reason, been laid on my heart a lot. <clears throat> not to necessarily do anything, but just, like, it's been brought up in conversation a lot, and I thought about it a lot. So, I was driving by a church sign, or a church, and I saw their sign, and it said, Lent, written... Um, vertically rather than horizontally and beside the L it said let's and then it's eliminate negative but it said thinking 
<laughs> and that's a typo on my part. I apologize. It did not say thoughts. It said thinking. And so this morning, pretty much anything that could go wrong up here has. Asley and I have been here since nine trying to get everything prepared. <clears throat> and my thoughts were going haywire. But I refused to think on those thoughts. And so I'm driving past that sign again on the way to my house, probably going faster than I should have through the city limits. And I saw that sign again, and I was like, that says thinking, not thoughts. Like, we cannot control what thoughts come to our mind. But we can control whether or not we think on those thoughts. A thought is something that's going to come, I mean, everywhere we go. Like, right now, I could probably have the thought of, wow, that tree is very green, you know, because our windows are open and I can see all those things. But it's our, what are you going to think and ponder on? So our um, acronym, because I love acronyms, is LENT. Let's eliminate negative thinking. <clears throat> so anyway, next slide, John. <coughs> cool. <clears throat> so um, this week, as I was talking to a few people about what God had been dealing with me about, I called Miss Kim because that's what I do. <laughs> she helps talk me through life. But, um, and she was like, that's so crazy that you're thinking about that because I was actually thinking on those same lines in this scripture. So I'm going to read y'all this scripture. It's about <laughs> producing what you see and what you think about. So Genesis 30, 25 through 43. Soon after Rachel had given birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, okay, let me give y'all the, the backstory. So you have Jacob who has come to Laban in another country. He left his home. He came to Laban because he wanted a wife. And so he asked Laban how he could serve him in order to gain his wife, Rachel. Well, Rachel was the younger of two sisters and so Laban told him that if he served him for seven years, he could have Rachel as a wife. He did. He was very faithful, served him, done everything he asked. Um, and then he was tricked. And Laban gave him Leah instead of Rachel because Leah was the oldest. Well, Jacob then asked Laban, Laban, I really wanted Rachel as my wife, so what can I do to get Rachel as well? He asked him to serve him seven more years, and he did, and he got Rachel as his wife. So now he has Leah and Rachel, a very common thing in the Bible days. Um, so then he, there was some other things that he was wanting. Um, he wanted to grow his herds and things like that. And so he asked Laban again, what can I do? And Laban told him to serve him more. And it just kept me in this endless process of, serving Laban in order to really gain nothing except for his wives and his children. And he never got to be on his own. So this is what he's wanting now where we're at. Genesis 30, 25 through 43. Soon after Rachel had given birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, Please release me so I can go home to my own country. Let me take my wives and children, for I have earned them by serving you, and let me be on my way. You certainly know how hard I have worked for you. Please listen to me, Laban replied. I have become wealthy, for the Lord has blessed me because of you. Tell me how much I owe you, and whatever it is, I'll pay it. Jacob replied, You know how hard I've worked for you, and how your flocks and herds have grown under my care. You had little indeed before I came, but your wealth has increased enormously. The Lord has blessed you through everything that I've done, but now, what about me? When can I start providing for my own family? What wages do you want? Laban asked again. Joseph replied, don't give me anything. Just do this one thing and I'll continue to tend and watch over your flocks. Let me inspect your flocks today and remove all the sheep and goats that are speckled or spotted along with all the black sheep. Give these to me as my wages. In the future, when you check on the animals you have given to me as my wages, you'll see that I have been honest. If you find in my flock any goats without speckles or spots or any sheep that are not black, you will know that I have stolen them from you. <clears throat> All right, Laban replied, it will be as you say. But that very day, Laban went out and removed the male goats that were streaked and spotted and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted or had white patches and all the black sheep. He placed them in the care of his own sons who took them a three days journey from where Jacob was. Meanwhile, Jacob stayed and cared for the rest of Laban's flock. So he says he will give him these things 
but he took them away literally the same day that he said he would give them to him. So, <clears throat> then Jacob took some fresh branches from poplar, almond, and plane trees and filled off strips of bark, making white streaks on them. Then he placed these peeled branches in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink, for that was where they made it. And when they made it in front of the white streaked branches, they gave birth to young that were streaked, speckled, and spotted. Jacob separated those lambs from Laban's flock, and at mating time, he turned the flock to face Laban's animals that were streaked or black. This is how he built his own flock instead of increasing Laban's. Whenever the stronger females were ready to mate, Jacob would place the peeled branches in the watering troughs in front of them. Then they would mate in front of the branches, but he didn't do this to the weaker ones. So the weaker lambs belonged to Laban, and the stronger ones were Jacob's. As a result, Jacob became very wealthy with a large flock of sheep and goats, female and male servants, and many camels and donkeys. So, what he done, in case, I don't know, I had to read that a few times to really understand this, but he took branches and he made them spotted and streaked and speckled. And they looked at this while they drank and when they made it and they produced what they saw. They saw speckled and streaked and spotted and none of these, because Laban, it says, Laban had taken away all the speckled and streaked and spotted, so none of these were speckled, streaked, and spotted, so they should not have produced that. But they produced it because they saw it. It was in their face every time they went to mate. So, how do we produce positivity then? If that's what we're looking for, and if we're trying to get rid of negative thoughts, then how do we produce positivity? So I have a few little things that I'm just going to let y'all see. And I have copies of all my notes if y'all want them to. Um, so we set our thoughts on things above. Philippians 4.8 says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Colossians 3.2 says, Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Isaiah 55.8-9 says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Another way we can produce positivity is capture our thoughts. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 10, 5 says, We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Also, we can let God transform us. And this one's hard. This is a hard thing to wake up every day and decide, God... I know that this is how I'm going to feel today, but I want to feel how you want me to feel today. But Romans 12, 2, I love this verse. I think it's so awesome, and I love it in this translation. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Another way is believe that our words have power, just like Papa John was saying. <clears throat> Matthew 21, 22 says, You can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it. If you have faith, if you believe and you have faith that you're going to get what you say you're going to get, you're going to get it. It's in the Word. And I don't know if y'all realize this or not, but that's red letters. That's Jesus saying that. Right. So that's a promise. And that we're going to talk about this in a minute. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But write that down. When you get home, write that down. Matthew 21, 22 says that if I have faith, I will receive what I ask for. Right. That's something you can stand on when you're in the middle of a muck and you don't know how to get yourself out. You can go back to that journal and you can say, I know that I can get this. I know that this is something that God promised me. So Proverbs 18.21 says, <clears throat> The tongue can bring death or life, and those who love to talk will reap its consequences. Then we can guard our heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. 
And the thing is about that, before things become a heart matter, they're a thought matter. You have to really think on thoughts before it really gets into your heart. So make sure that your thoughts are producing, or you're thinking on the positive thoughts and not the negative ones. This is just cute little stuff because this is where we're about to go. <clears throat> so, attitude of gratitude, your attitude determines your direction. Gratitude is the best medicine. It heals your mind, your body, and your spirit. And it attracts more things to be grateful for. So, <clears throat> I started this thing with Erin. And, um... It's been really fun. I love starting new things with him, mainly because, you know, it's just fun to start things with him because he tends to, before, he has tended to look at really like the pessimistic side of life rather than the optimistic side of life. And so I love to find new ways to get him to look at the optimistic side of life because I'm very optimistic. And so I guess it was last Thursday, he came home from work and, um, I was making dinner, and he helped me finish making dinner, and we sat down to eat, and I was like, well, how was your day, which is an every day when he gets home kind of conversation, and then he told me how his day was, and it was all like, <clears throat> I felt bad, but I made it, um, this went wrong, that went wrong, you know, all this stuff, and so I was like, okay, so what is one thing, just one thing that you can think that brought you joy today, that you can be grateful? And he thought for a minute, and he said, I got to clock out today. And I was like, that's awesome. You know, like, praise the Lord, you got to clock out. Some people got stuck there because they're in an outage, and they didn't get the clock out, you know. So praise the Lord for that. You got to come home at a decent hour. Well, then the next day, same thing. And um, I was like, okay, so uh, what did you find that brought you joy today? Just one thing. You know, I'm not asking to come up with a list. And... Um, he thought for a minute, and then he was like, I got to drive the Mustang today, um, and so I was able to get home a little faster because I didn't have to get stopped behind the people who wouldn't really go. And I was like, okay, cool, you know? Well, then the next day, he was like, uh, we were getting ready to talk and have our little evening conversation, and um, he was like, you want to know what my one joy thing for today is? And I said, yeah. And so he told me. And um, I don't remember what that one was. I wish I did. But I think it was, some, oh, I know what it was. Um, he said, our meeting went very well today, better than I expected. And I was like, that is great. You know, and I tried to encourage him in this positive thinking so that eventually, whatever you feed, that's what is going to grow. And so if you're only thinking about the bad things that happen, instead of trying to find that one good thing, and then it also helps because he knows when he gets home that I'm going to ask him for his one piece of joy. You know, and so all day long he's like trying to think about what his one joy thing is going to be. And so it makes you think about joy things. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all. And like, um, does anybody have any experience with that? Like, have you tried that for yourself? Yes, and it is trying to think of something. I've actually um, listened to the Body Bomb show. Some of y'all may have heard it. But they have uh, what they call pimp and joy, and then their S wall line. Well, in their S wall line, they have a four things book, and you write in it four things every time you open it that you're grateful for. And it can be something as little as I was able to take my baby girl out for ice cream today, and we had so much fun. Mm -hmm. But it's the little things, and if you ponder on those, then the ones that look a little bit bigger that didn't play in your favor kind of fade out into the background, and those aren't a thing anymore. Yep. <clears throat> and that's the truth, and that's what happens. And y'all have homework this week, and I'm super excited about it. But anyway, moving on. Give thanks with a grateful heart. The Bible is all about giving thanks to the Lord, even when we don't feel like it. Sometimes, that's right. I can tell you what, there's a lot of people in this room that know me on days that I have had bad days. Mama, last week, she was like, Brittany, you are not yourself today. You are not happy. You look down. What's going on? And so we talked about it. And then after that, I got better. You know, I mean, that's the thing is like, <clears throat> get with your people. Let your people know you. Let them know when to ask you and to encourage you, you know. 
but still in all, give thanks. And that's what I told her. I was like, Mama, I am a little down today, but I've still been trying to, you know, push through and do this thing. And she was like, I know you have, but you just, I can just tell something's off. And so um, the Bible says, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. That's in Colossians. Colossians is full of thankfulness, you guys. Like, if y'all need a book to read to encourage you, read Colossians. I've been loving it this week. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Colossians 3.15. Don't worry about anything. So what are we supposed to worry about? Nothing. nothing. We're supposed to worry about nothing. But instead, pray about everything. everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Amen. Then you will experience God's peace. Do y'all see that? Like, I know it's been a while since we've all been in school, but if then, the then doesn't happen unless the if happens. So if you pray and you thank God for everything, then you will experience God's peace. That's an if-then statement. And that is such an awesome thing to think about. Like, it's not going to be peaceful if you can't thank God for something good, you know? So, <clears throat> then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6. What is an attitude of gratitude? An attitude of gratitude, she already has it up there, but does anybody have any guesses on what an attitude of gratitude is for you? No. Y'all are to, just to think on good, good, good things, like the Bible says. Think on good things, the good things that God does for us. Mm -hmm. And meditate on it. Thank you, God, for giving me good help. Thank <clears> you, God, for uh, protecting me as I traveled over here this morning. Thank you, God, for protecting our home. Thank you for angels all around to protect us everywhere we go. So we've got so much to be thankful for. We don't really see the angels protecting us, but they are. Mm -hmm. and, and we see God's wor word working in our life. When we're thankful, it's like we see more things to be thankful for. Yep. We just see continue to have more thankfulness in our heart, and God pours out more blessings on us. And we are, we are blessed people. That's and, right, we are. And we have to just say, thank you, God, for blessing me, <clears throat> blessing my family, blessing our loved ones. And when we go to pray for everybody, we're thankful for everything God does in our church. Mm -hmm. Open the heavens over us, the Holy Spirit, Jesus' power and His Word, His Word working in our lives. When we speak His Word, whatever we speak, it's what happens. Yep. Right. And we've got to be careful what we say. Mm -hmm. We can't. We don't just say any old thing. We've got to say God's word, good things, and the, what we say is is very important because we're speaking out the word that will happen in our lives. The word of God is life to us. That's right. It's in us. The Holy Spirit's in us. Mm -hmm. Life's in us. So when we speak that <clears throat> word, the Holy Spirit manifests the word. God manifests. The angels come forth to carry the word of God to heaven and back to us. And that's how we keep open heavens. Open heavens. And I think we're going to see this even more and more in these last days as the Bible says God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Mm -hmm. That's all of us. Yep, that's right. We don't have to be a minister. We don't have to have a <coughs> special calling. All of us, he will pour out his spirit on us and move through us. It may be just Going to Walmart, witness to someone. Anywhere we are, if there's a person, try to say something good to that person to encourage them because we're, we're building up treasures in heaven That's right. through people. It's more like one-on-one -on -one than it is saying like with a lot of people around. But it's a chain reaction, just speaking to that one person and making their day, and maybe, maybe two or three people that day. Mm -hmm. But... That's what I try to think about every day. Wherever I am, 
see someone, just be nice to them, talk to them, talk about God, bring up God and say, you know, how God's with us and blessing us and get, let them hear about God. Mm -hmm. You know, just everything they hear, they'll think about it because we need more of God in all of our lives. We As we watch the news, we need more of God. But this is why we have to speak it like you say it. Right. We've got to speak that word. And so an attitude of gratitude is making it a habit to express thankfulness and appreciation in right. all parts of your right. life on a regular basis right. for both the big and the small things. Because this is what I've learned about an attitude of gratitude. Yeah. It's like a snowball. So you start off with this little bitty snowball that you make in your hand, right? Yeah. And then you roll it in some more snow and it gets a little bigger. Mm -hmm. And you roll it in some more snow and then it gets a little bigger. Yeah. But if you leave it there and you don't continue to roll it, it doesn't get bigger and it'll melt, you know? So you have to keep up with your snowball. And so that's the importance of making sure you do it every day. So I have come up with five ways to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. And by, when I say I have come up with this, I've researched this week. This is not my own, um, you know, thought processes. I did get this from different places. So, number one, write it down. Keep a gratitude journal. I cannot express that enough. Like, the importance of it is so out of this world because whenever I get down or... I'm dealing with something that I know I've already dealt with and wow. conquered it before. I go back wow. and I say, no, devil, because God promised me this on this day at this time. And I'm standing on that promise. Right. Keep a gratitude journal. Um, number two, talk about it. Talk about your gratitude because this will reinforce how you feel. Every day, whenever Aaron has to think about his joy thing, and then he has to tell me that's two times that it's running through his mind, right? Yeah, it's awesome. I did ask him if I could share this. He's not going to be mad at me. Um, <laughs> number three, meditate on it. This is so huge. Like, I'm actually kind of mad at myself because I haven't seen the importance of meditating before. But just, I would say, since probably November... Um, I have made meditating, but probably not in the way some people are thinking, but I have made it a huge part of my day. Um, and this is how I meditate. I think about a promise or I think about something that I want as far as, um, anything. Like right now, last night it was with Kim <laughs> and I just want her to listen to me every time I speak and do it the first time and not the tenth time. And so... I'll just sit there instead of getting angry, which I really did get angry last night, and I had to ask forgiveness from Kinley and God. But I'll sit there, and I'll just take a deep breath, and I'll say, Lord, I thank you that Kinley is going to listen. She's going to be an obedient child. She's going to serve you all of her days. And then I will make up in my head this huge scenario that doesn't make sense right now. Yeah. But it will whenever she fulfills it. But my thoughts sometimes in the middle of that scenario will be like, oh, but what if this happens? And I have to say no, because I'm deciding that this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I will make it out. And I will just come up with this reel of video in my mind. And it doesn't make sense, I know. But it will. And it's mm -hmm. all going to come to fruition because I meditate on the things and the promises that I want right. to see in my life. <clears throat> So the fourth way is you can express it. Tell someone that you're grateful for them or write a note thanking them for the difference that they made in your life. So sometimes whenever you feel extra down, I try to think, you know what, if I'm feeling down, then somebody else might, try, yeah. might be feeling down. And so I think about, okay, Lord, who is it that needs to know that I'm grateful for them today? And I will either send them a message or I will write a letter and put it in the mail. Mm -hmm. Or if I see them in person, I'll give them a hug. You know, like, you know, different things like that. Mm -hmm. Express it because it's needed. Because it helps somebody else start yes. their snowball effect. And then seek it. 
If you want to be thankful, get around people who have that characteristic because that is a huge deal. It's a huge thing to get around people who have a thankful characteristic if you want to be thankful. Because if you're around people who are negative all the time, chances are you're going to be negative Nancy right there with them. Any thoughts? Any comments? I did buy a plaque this week, uh -huh. and it has a little clip on it, and it says, I am grateful for. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah and then and every day you can just write something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, that's I was good. actually going to do something today, and the more I thought about it, I don't know if I maybe disobeyed the Lord or not on this. Hopefully I didn't. But I was going to bring journals and make everyone take one home and have a gratitude journal to keep up with for the next month. <clears throat> but I decided instead that I'm going to let y'all volunteer to tell me if you want me to make you a gratitude journal. And it's going to be filled with prompts. Like each page will have a prompt of like, today I'm grateful for, or today I found joy in, and just different things that I'm going to make this week. And anybody who wants one, let me know, because I want to make sure that all of y'all are able to start your gratitude journey because it seriously will change your life. Will you have bad days? Yes, mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. We're humans and bad days happen. But also, I want you to do something else. Um, if y'all don't want a gratitude journal, that's fine. I'll do it. But, you know, y'all can too if y'all want and join in with me. But another thing I want you to do is if you are going to start a gratitude journey, I want you to find at least three people that you're comfortable with knowing your stuff, that you can be vulnerable with, that you can talk to and know that it's just between you and them. And I want you to ask them to help keep you accountable and to help ask you those questions every day of, hey, where did you find joy today? Hey, what were you grateful for today? Because that makes a difference. It makes a difference when you have somebody that's going to ask you. Um, and so... I don't know. I want y'all to do that, if you will, to really try, because I know that God is ready to change the world, and I know that he can start in Lucille, Mississippi, and in Mobile, Alabama, and in Big Point, Mississippi, and in Sims, Alabama. You know, like, I know he can start with us, because it just takes one person to stand up, because, I mean, think about if we had positive thinkers going around rather than negative thinkers— how much different our atmosphere would be that we live in every day. And then we could ponder on the good things that God does and we could spread joy and peace and kindness and patience. And it wouldn't even be difficult anymore because our snowballs have got so big that it literally just takes things over, you know? So anyway, I'm going to pray for us if nobody has any questions. Can I say something? Sure. Um, on the expressive. I just want you to know that this morning I happened to send a text message to my neighbor, Bev, to express how thankful I was for her. She actually got into a car accident this past Thursday. <coughs> she went to the uh, food bank to go pick up some food, and it was at a church, and there was a 18-wheeler sitting there with some pipes sticking up the back of her that 18-wheeler. And they didn't have any red flags on it, and she was pulling into a parking stall, and that 18, the pole that was on the 18-wheeler went straight through her windshield mm -hmm. and hit the passenger seat. I mean, it has, it's a really old car, so to me, I think the car is told. But when we got home, she was so panicked, so turning in circles, and I was so grateful to be there to help her, to calm her down, to, to be there. And so this morning I just sent her a text message and I told her, I am so grateful that you're my neighbor and you get me, you know, you put me in the place where I need to be to be comforting to her. Yeah. So I just wanted to know, I started it this morning and I didn't know I did that. Look at there. See, when God speaks, he speaks. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the thing is, yeah, that's good stuff, Miss Naomi. Thank you for being obedient in that because I'm sure. Put our arms around her and 
hug her and hold her because she was rattled. Yeah. I mean, she was really rattled, and, you know, I'm just wondering if I deserve a car, and we just got to love on her and hold her and talk to her. Yeah, that's awesome. That is definitely good. <clears throat> Father, I thank you for your goodness to us. I thank you that you love us enough to teach us these things. I thank you that you love us enough to chase us down and pursue our hearts and pursue our minds, Lord. Father, I ask that you would just help us to take the thoughts captive that come into our minds and to really judge them and see, is this negative? Will this influence me in a negative way? Will this hurt me in a bad way? Or will this bring me goodness? And will this bring me peace? And will this bring me joy and help me to be a blessing to others? Lord, help us to think about how we think. Let it be conscious in our mind on the forefront of everything that happens with us. Lord, I just ask that you would help us to walk out this journey with you, to really listen to you and take that time to make it and to make an effort to really sit in your presence and think about the things that you want us to think about and hear your voice, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would speak to each person that's here today and that you would help them on this journey if it's something that they want to pursue and that you would help them get others started on this journey as well. We love you so much. We thank you for this beautiful day and I ask that you would touch every person's life that isn't here, that is here, Lord, that you would be with each of them that call this church home and that's part of our family and even our extended friends, Lord, that we would be a blessing to them because of who you are and that we would be able to show them the love that you have for them.